First job, add pomegranate marinade for the quail, which have been cut in half and flattened. So small. Aren't they small? Yeah, it's tiny. So it's almost like a sort of nice entrance into eating something slightly gamey. OK, if you give them a nice season for me, salt and pepper, and all spatchcock means is that the rib cage has been taken out and they're flattened down. And because the bird is so delicate, uh, it's flattened to cook evenly, and it really is a nice, sort of light, gamey, dense chicken flavour. So we're going to toast the spices. When you think of Middle Eastern food, it's packed with flavors. amazing flavours. Tablespoon of coriander, a teaspoon of cumin, and a nice little seasoning of salt. So we toast them now, intensifying the flavour. When they start smoking lightly, mm -hmm. that's a nice indication that they're ready. OK. If you grind away. So the best thing there, let me send it close to the Thank you. Oh, look, your tummy's out. <laughs> I thought it was the quail, it was your tummy. This hand here okay. keeps it nice and firm, and you grind that into a nice powder for Daddy, please. It smells so good. Doesn't it? Yeah. So to get that in, really go around the outside and that grinds it up. Of course. Uh, I've gone around a pestle of mortar more times than you've kissed boys. <laughs> Squeeze the garlic in. Next. A little glug. Of olive oil. Of olive oil. Okay, then I want you to pour six tablespoons, please. So that is pomegranate molasses. So it's like an aged balsam with vinegar, mm -hmm. but really reduced down. Give that a nice mix up. Is it going to be very sweet, Dad? A little taste. It's sweet, but sour. Yeah, it is. No. It's so good, though. No. Take a nice spoon, put it inside the quail. You can even do this the night before. Good. You pop them in the fridge. Let the quail marinate anywhere from half an hour to overnight. For my ultimate Middle Eastern dessert, it's got to be baklava. Start by melting butter in a pan. Chop pistachios in a blender. Then combine with caster sugar and lemon zest. Brush the melted butter around a small baking tray. Place half a sheet of filo pastry on the base. Brush well with melted butter and sprinkle with a pistachio mix. Repeat and press down between layers. You're looking to create 30 to 35 layers. Then cut the baklava into bite-sized rectangles and bake in a preheated oven for 30 to 40 minutes. Meanwhile, make your delicious citrusy syrup. Simply add water to a pan, along with caster sugar, and the zest and juice of a lemon. Simmer for seven to 10 minutes, making sure the sugar has fully dissolved. Now, to give the baklava wonderful sweetness, remove from the oven, and whilst hot, pour over the syrup so each layer is gloriously sticky. Leave the baklava to absorb the syrup for at least 12 hours. These delicious sticky treats will keep for a week, but they're so Moorish they'll be gone in a flash. The quails have marinated. Now they're ready to cook. Nice hot pan. Mm -hmm. Pick up your quail and skin side down first, OK? Get all that nice colour. And always open them up as well in the pan. OK, we'll get that skin. Crispy. Crispy, that's right. Smell that pomegranate. I can really smell it. It smells so good. You get all that marinating there. You know, cook with it as well. Don't waste it. How long, on average, does it take to cook, did you say? This three, about 12 to 15 minutes in the oven. And a little touch of water in. Bring that up to the boil. Into the oven, 180. So 12 to 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. The final job before serving, a herby butter bean salad to go with my quail in pomegranate molasses. Now, one of the things that I 
love about Middle Eastern salads is the sort of crunch and the colour as well. Butter beans, it's going to be the base of our salad. From there, little radishes and sort of top and tail them. Get them like that and throw them in. There's nothing small and dainty in there, OK? Yep. So, with the spring onions. Nice, we're going to use the greens and the whites. I want you to slice along that way this time, so you've got those okay. nice light shards, OK? Yeah. Now, the croutons are made out of these little pita breads. Just slice lengthways. In with the salad? Oh, yes. So this salad is all about texture. So cucumber, OK? And take out the seeds. How comes you're taking the seeds out? It just makes the salad very watery. Like a shower. Okay. <laughs> Cucumber juice. Delicious. Take this, you go, yeah, you got me going. You really got me going. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. I've got revision to be doing. Don't worry, this is far more important, trust me. Who that. needs exams when you can cook for a living? After the lecture you fine. gave me with my exam. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Be a chef for a living. Have a proper job. Don't talk your thumbs out like that. You'll be thumbless. Let's go. Now, good cucumber in. From there, take your nice vibrant tomatoes, slice down. It almost looks like a Greek salad as Does well, it? with all the colours. It resembles that, that's right. And mm -hmm. with the celery. Like before. Yeah, lengthways. So we need some mint and parsley. I want you sprinkling it in there, it really mix it through. The herbs give it that nice kind of freshness. Mm -hmm. But I want a bit of a bite in there now. I love pomegranate. So, just carefully open that up. Okay, and then just drop them on top. So we've got a bit of fruitiness now into the salad. For crunch, simply cut up whole pita breads, fry in a really hot pan with olive oil until wonderfully golden, crispy and irresistible. Out into a sieve. OK. Next, a sprinkle of sumac. That's a dried fruit from the Middle East. The zest of a lemon and the juice, then a drizzle of olive oil, and last but not least, my crunchy pita croutons. Just make the croutons on. Well, they've gotten hard. And then just lift that up and then mix mm -hmm. in with your hands there. Nice and gentle, just with your fingertips. There you go, so you just mix, there you go. It doesn't crush anything. It doesn't crush anything. But then let's just take a little bean. Wow. Isn't that delicious? Mm-hmm. Nice. Now, quail. It's got that really mm, sort of toasted, almost like a sort of light it smells so good. barbecue flavour. Can't wait to try it. Beautiful. Wow. And then just finally. A bit of lemon zest. It just lightens everything up a little bit. And it goes so well with the pomegranate. Now just. Mm. Wow. That will smell better than any boyfriend you'll ever have. Oh, God. I beg to differ. <laughs> OK, good. Let's go. How delicious is that? That's so delicious. My Middle Eastern feast of quail with a pomegranate molasses and butter bean salad with baklava to follow. When dishes are this aromatic and colourful, there's no wonder that Middle Eastern food is always a hit. You can't get more classic than a centuries-old midday meal of bread, cheese and beer. Reinvented and marketed by pubs as a plowman's lunch in the 60s, I'm now giving it my 21st century take. Right, Plowman's with the most amazing but super simple beer baked bread. Hearty and full of flavour. For a really quick and easy bread dough, sieve a mix of wholemeal and self-raising white flour with a good pinch of salt. Salt is really important in the bread. It's the first thing I do once I've cracked it and smelt. You want to smell that salt baked throughout. Beer in, about 250 mils of beer. The reason why this recipe works so well is that the beer, it's got that yeast. So naturally, it's going to work beautifully. Give that a really good mix. I'm looking for the mixture to be quite wet. If the dough becomes too firm, then it's going to cook dry in the centre. Just as it starts to fall through the whisk, that is perfect. Beautiful. This mix will work really well as one large loaf, but I want to make my plowman's a little bit more special. Small tins give it that kind of intimacy, and I quite like having my own little loaf. Give the moulds a really nice lining with butter. Make sure you butter the top. Now, 
tablespoon of flour. Dust inside the mold. That will stop your mixture sticking. Tap out any excess. Three quarters fill your little molds. And we're gonna allow it to sort of rise just so it comes above the mold and forms this really nice miniature loaf. Onto the tray, centimeter apart. Into the oven, 25 to 30 minutes at 180. Something quite nice about the smell of home baked bread in the kitchen. Delicious. No plan was it's complete without pickled onions. Red onion is a lot sweeter, less harsh than a white onion. The early days of Plowman's, you've got those ghastly, sharp pickled onions that make you almost cry when you're crunching them. I'm going to lightly pickle my red onion. Just push your fingers through so you get these nice sort of onion rings. A little touch of salt, a little sprinkling of sugar, and then a couple of cloves in there. That gives it a really nice sort of perfume and sort of makes the pickling slightly more mellow. Red wine vinegar. Now, if you haven't got red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, it's just as good, but red matches the red onion, so it goes hand in glove. A couple of tablespoons of vinegar. Just give that a really good mix. To speed up the pickling process, use a weight to put pressure on the onions. As the weight presses down on the onions, the clove, the salt, the sugar, the vinegar work their magic. And it comes out with a really nice, light, fragrant pickle. For my 21st century plowmans, I'm creating an all-in-one salad and bringing the traditional elements together with a punchy dressing. A tablespoon of English mustard, a tablespoon of honey, a touch of salt and pepper, and finish off with white wine vinegar and olive oil. Now, generally, it's sort of three parts oil to one part vinegar. That's the sort of general base. You don't really think of a vinaigrette with a plowman's, but this is a really nice sort of modern approach to a plowman's. For my plowman's salad, I'm using a mixture of robust and crunchy romaine lettuce and punchy watercress. If I was making a watercress soup, I'd use the stalks, but the stalks are a little bit bitter, so I just grab them like that, pinch them, and then twist. Mm. Very peppery, very hot, but so juicy. Watercress in, your celery, chop it. Nice and finely. It's the one thing that everybody leaves is that stick of celery, so scatter it amongst the salad. A bit of oomph and colour from some sliced radishes and sweetness from a thinly sliced apple. In there. Whilst you're busy throwing your plowman's salad together, do not forget about your beer bread. Before it comes out, I'm going to glaze the top with a little touch of milk. That'll put a really nice finish to the bread. Back in for the last five minutes. Now for the magic in the plowman's. Generally, you'd see it as a ham or cheddar or Stilton plowman's. It's hard to dictate which one's the best. So, for the ultimate plowman's, I'm adding all three. For your cheddar, peel some nice shards of that delicious, creamy cheddar. Just get them dancing on top. The dressing, drizzle round in circles. And then finally, our delicious. Lightly pickled onions. Give them a good squeeze. And look, just dot the onions around. Bread is ready. It's got that nice, yeasty smell. Warm, crusty, and delicious. And there you go. That is my classic, modern version of a traditional, stunning plowman's. Wow. My delicious all-in-one plowman salad with individual beer bread loaves updated for the 21st century. Lightly fried, my delicious halloumi and courgette cakes squeeze every last bit of flavour out of those vegetables. But first, I'm preparing a simple slow roast tomato and watercress salad. These cherry tomatoes are perfect. If you haven't got cherry tomatoes, vine tomatoes are good, or even just big, normal, plump tomatoes. Lay the tomatoes on the tray. And these go into the oven for about 90 minutes. If you turn the oven down really low, you can leave them in overnight. To be honest, the longer you leave them, the better they taste. 
Once you've seasoned them with salt, sprinkle over with some sugar. And the salt and sugar combined speeds up the drying process because you want that nice chewy texture. And then you get these little thyme flowers and just pick off the buds. Garlic, sliced. Then just spread that on. Now the tray looks quite full and compact. For 90 minutes in the oven, you'll see everything shrink down, all the skins blistering, and the flavor intensifies so nicely. Extra virgin olive oil. That gives a nice earthy flavor to the tomatoes. Place your tomatoes into an oven preheated to 150 degrees C and cook long and slow for an hour and a half. Now, halloumi cakes. There's something quite exciting about halloumi cheese. It's a very firm cheese and it fries brilliantly. Peel the carrots. Great. Not too finely, you want that nice texture. Next, courgette. The secret is keeping it all grated the same. Put that into a sieve. A sprinkling of salt will draw out liquid from the vegetables. Then grate the halloumi. Halloumi cheese doesn't look that tasty, but once you've got color on it in the pan, it's really, really delicious. Now, really important to squeeze out the excess water on the veg, and you'll see all that water that needs to come out of there. If we didn't do this, it will make your little patties non-friable because the whole thing starts to separate. And then mix in with the cheese. Spring onions, chop up the whites and the greens. Now we're gonna season that with some delicious fresh mint and fresh coriander. Whenever it's vegetarian, I like to put a combination of herbs in there. Tarragon and parsley, mint and coriander, basil and lemongrass. All delicious on their own, but in tandem, their flavors play off each other. Next, two eggs in. Give that a little mix. Add the eggs to the mixture. And then finally, a couple of tablespoons of breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs help dry out any excess moisture. Mix all the ingredients together. Before you start shaping these, Taste the mixture. Mm. It's really important to identify the seasoning now. If you wait until you've cooked them, it'll be too late to adjust the seasoning. Roll them to a large golf ball. Shape them to like a little mini burger. You can spice these up with some chili in there. If you haven't got fresh chili, chili flakes. And it's something that can be done up a day in advance. To get your cakes firm and ready for frying, put them into the fridge uncovered for 25 minutes. Pan on, get that nice and hot. Whilst I'm waiting for that, I'll get the dressing ready. Slice the red chili, seeds and all, on an angle into shards. Then chop fresh ginger. Season with a sprinkle of sugar and salt. Add some rice wine vinegar. Add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. To finish off, some chopped coriander. Got that sweet, sour, spicy flavor. With my chili dressing done, I can start frying off my halloumi cakes in a hot oiled pan. We get that nice, crisp edge. You can already start to smell that sauteed halloumi with the courgettes and carrots. It smells delicious. Really important to put a nice amount of color on them. As my cakes sizzle away, I can finish off my roast tomato salad. One of my favorite leaves has to be watercress. Just cut off stalks. Shallot rings. Watercress and shallot go brilliantly well together. That shallot looks so dainty when you open up these little ringlets. Don't forget to turn your cakes. Now, tomatoes. Whatever you don't use, just jar them and put them in the fridge. Mm. Just drop those slow cooked warm tomatoes over the watercress. The sweetness is incredible, absolutely delicious. A little drizzle of aged balsamic vinegar. Gives that tartness to the watercress. Watercress is naturally peppery, so it doesn't need any pepper. Just a little touch of salt. And then a light sprinkling of extra virgin olive oil. After five minutes on a medium heat, my halloumi cakes are ready. So important to have taken out of that water. You can see it doesn't disintegrate and then just get your dressing. Take a spoon of it, 
and then tilt it to the side because I want the garnish. I don't want the juice. And if that does not turn you on to become a vegetarian for the night, I honestly don't know what will. Delicious. My crispy golden halloumi courgette and herb cakes with a sumptuous roast tomato and watercress salad, all of the flavor with none of the meat. Jack, give us a hand, please, bud. Why? Because it's your favorite. Yeah? yeah? Chicken wings. OK. Right, let's start off with the marinade. Tamarind and paste in first. All of that into there. All of it? Yeah, all of that. OK. Good, in. So two tablespoons of palm sugar, please. Is that like heated sugar? Um, it's a really good question here. It's, it's a natural palm sugar, and it's perfect for marinades. How many wings do you think you've eaten so far at the age of 13? Oh, well, I eat probably 50 a year. 50 a year? Yeah, something like that. A nice sprinkle of chilli flakes. Depends how hot you like them. Oh, I love what them hot. Hot. Uh, don't forget the girls. You know, they start complaining when you get them too hot. How come you love hot food? So um, I don't know. I surely love hot food. So in there we've got palm sugar, tamarind paste, chilli flakes, mm -hmm. some garlic, one nice tablespoon of fish sauce, please, Jim. This is looking really good. Isn't it? And then a couple of tablespoons of oil for marinade. In. How nice. A little taste. What are your finger, Jack? Mmm. That's really good. Right, wings in. Get your hands in there and start rubbing in the marinade, please. OK. So the secret now is to coat the chicken wings in all that marinade. Yeah? Yeah. How long do you leave them in here? Do you know what? The longer, the better. Cover that. Ooh. With limb film. Wash your hands away. Excellent. Good job. Ideally, marinate your wings overnight, but half an hour will be enough to get the flavours going. Right, so they're marinated now. If you take the tray out, please, love. Bottom one, thank you. And then we're going to put some tinfoil on there. Thank you. So, fold that in half. It stops them from sticking. And that will stop the wings from burning. So from there, get them really dipped in that marinade. And try and get the wing like that and just sort of scoop it up like that. So get that really nice glaze on there. Mm. And then just, yeah, put mm. that on there. So all that garlic will roast. And then we've got all those wings beautifully done. Okay, mate, then ready for the oven. 170, 25 to 30 minutes. Yep. Good man. Excellent. Nice. It's hot. <laughs> Wings are in. Right. To go with my ultimate Southeast Asian dinner, rice cooked in homemade Thai green curry paste. For the easy green curry paste, roughly chop coriander, lemongrass, green chilies, lime leaf, shallots, garlic, and ginger. A glug of oil and blitz. The paste takes minutes to make, but it'll keep for up to 10 days if covered with oil and stored in a sealed jar in the fridge. To awaken the flavors, lime, roll to release the juice. Next, season with salt and pepper and blend into a smooth paste. Heat the paste until aromatic. Add in cooled or leftover rice. I love using fragrant jasmine rice, but your standard long grain rice is great too. When thoroughly heated through, serve. Thai green curry paste is so easy to make. So with rice like this, it's incredible. But simply add to chicken, fish or veg to create a fantastic meal in minutes. Right, now for the green beans. Beans in. Uh, bring the water to the boil. What's the first thing I should put in there? Beans. Salt. Salt. So, nice pinch of salt in there. Yeah? So, make an amazing dressing. Two nice tablespoons. Yeah. Of the crunchy peanut butter, please. Why is it crunchy? It'll give it texture. And it'll be nice and sort of chunky. Green beans in. OK. Got the rice, the green beans. We're going to blanch them for two, two and a half minutes. What does blanching actually mean? Blanching means sort of part cooking. 
Mm. Okay. I'm going to blanch them in boiling water. Yeah. And then finish them in the pan. Use the back of the spoon, it'll be a little bit easier. And a teaspoon of brown sugar. In she goes. Nice. Is that a little bit too thick? Maybe, a, yeah, it yes. is. Let's put a little touch more soy sauce in there, let it down. Yeah? Yeah, that's better. A little touch of vinegar. Nice. I'm going to get a pan on now for my beans. So, a little taste. Do you taste it? It's so good. Oh, man. Mmm. Wow. Mm. So, if you get the garlic like that, and mm -hmm. just slice the garlic down like this. Just keep the knife nice and flat. Mm -hmm. That way, you'll slice through it. But take your time. Don't worry about the speed and technique right first. Just cut it in half. Okay. With your fingers. Good. And then lay the flat side down so it's nice and sturdy. Mm -hmm. And that nail there, it's not out like that. It's just guiding the knife so you can never cut yourself like that. Good. I'll drain the beans. Nice. A little tablespoon of oil. Get the pan nice and hot. And throw the garlic in, people. Good. Nice. Mmm. So fire the garlic. I can smell that already. Is that lovely? So give that a little toss. So when you toss it, push it down, push away, and pull back. Okay. Have a little go. Push it down and gently. There. That's it. Take your time. Nice. So push down and yep. pull back up. That's it. Nice. So it's getting nice and golden brown. Green beans are drained and they go in now to the garlic. Mmm. Wow. Combination of green beans, okay, with the rice. Have a little smell of that. Oh, mm. wow. I want you now to yep. spoon the dressing, please. In she goes. Nice. How delicious does that look? Wow. What's Daddy's policy at home? No waste. No waste. No waste, but now, smell that now. Mm. Oh wow! That. It doesn't smell of green beans. It no. smells of. Oh, that's it. Oh. Thanks. How nice is that? Mm. Lovely. Amazing. Right. That's the rice. That's mm. the green beans. Now, I want you to sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds on top, please. Nice and generous with the sesame seed. That'll give the beans a little bit of a crunch. Now, all that's left is for your favourites to come out. Don't those beans smell amazing? Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Jack, look at those beauties. One for me, one for you. Three for me, one for you. Now I'd like you to sprinkle some spring onions. On top, please, mate. Nice and generous. You've transformed a very cheap and cheerful chicken wing. Yeah. Right. You take them over. Please do not drop them. Okay. Jack. Let's go, bud. Nice. This is my ultimate simple Southeast Asian dinner. Sticky, spicy chicken wings, Thai green curry rice, and fantastic beans with chili peanut dressing, guaranteed to get the fussies of eaters into greens.